Welcome back you guys and the Jimmy Butler era in Minnesota has finally reached its breaking point and it's time to do a recap of what went wrong just like we did for the Chicago Bulls video a month ago. It's very important we talk about the moments from earlier parts of the season that led us to where we are now. If you remember around November, Jimmy Butler wasn't taking many shots on offense and let Carl Towns and Andrew Wiggins make up the majority of the plays and shot creation. In 35 minutes per game in November 2017, Jimmy Butler was averaging just 18 points a game and only put up 15 shots a night, which is well below what he put up in his last year in Chicago. It makes sense, he wasn't trying to force his will on the offensive end early on and let Cat and Wiggins play natural. That strategy was working okay, but Minnesota was outside of the top 8 in the West at 13 wins and 10 losses, so for a team that just made a franchise changing trade, they needed to do something to get into the playoff picture. And that happened right at the beginning of December when the Wolves let Jimmy be Jimmy on offense and have him control the ball. Virtually every single one of Jimmy's averages went up in December, his points, his assists, his shot attempts, and field goal percentage went up. Minnesota was now in the top 8 in the West at the beginning of January, and after watching that stretch it was clear that the best strategy for success in Minnesota was to let Jimmy control the offense. Now why am I talking about something that didn't really involve any conflict? Well it's build up for what would eventually be happening now. Jimmy did not have any time to wait for these guys to learn on the fly, he needed to take over. One of the moments that I think helped contribute to the mess that the Wolves are currently in was the injury that put Jimmy Butler out after the All-Star break. Jimmy suffered a right meniscus injury on this play versus the Rockets in February, which put him out almost two months. And the funny thing about that game is, while Jimmy was getting examined for his injury, he walked out to the tunnel after the game to call Cat uh, a soft person. The tough thing about this injury was that at the time, the Wolves were the clear third seed at 36 and 25, and most likely would have been the third seed had he not almost missed two months. That's just my opinion, I think they would have been the third seed, but with the way the standings were, and how Minnesota started to click, I think that's where they would have been, and they could have gotten a more favorable matchup in the first round. Not to mention they would have had home court advantage, they would have had a healthy Jimmy Butler, and an extra two months of playing basketball together. During the weeks that Jimmy was out, Minnesota looked like a team that should be out of the playoffs if it wasn't for Jimmy. The team defense completely collapsed with him out, and while Cat was able to get his numbers, the Wolves had to rely on less efficient players, which resulted in stagnant offense and L's in the loss column. Cat Wiggins and the Wolves looked pretty overwhelmed during that stretch without Jimmy. They just looked like another average team in the NBA. A lot of what people are saying about them being soft and nonchalant was on display during that stretch of play. Obviously numbers aren't everything, but these numbers pretty much confirm what we saw on the court. Minnesota was just a better team on both ends of the court while Jimmy was playing. The left side numbers are when Jimmy is playing and the right side is when he is on the bench. The Wolves had the equivalent of the NBA's worst defense with Jimmy not playing. As most of you guys remember, Jimmy came back for the final two regular season games and was able to push Minnesota to the 8th seed. The playoffs weren't too noteworthy, they were able to get one win against Houston in the playoffs. The story for that first round series was clear, the team just wasn't that scary with Jimmy not at 100%, Cat getting outplayed by Clint Capella, and Andrew Wiggins playing like a ghost. In my opinion, watching them lose in those games when he was out, and watching them look what Jimmy would call soft in the series against Houston, was what pushed him to tell Tibbs he wanted out four days after the season. Jimmy is about to hit the age of 30 and does not have time to wait, sit around and hope these guys can mature faster. He still has years left in his prime, but the clock is ticking. Almost everybody that is a top 15 player right now is in a stable situation or has had tons of regular season success and playoff success. Jimmy is not in a stable situation and he wants to be in a position where he can walk in and say, this team can get to the finals. It's just a mixed bunch of pieces in Minnesota. On one side, you have young players that might be a few years away from being ready to win a playoff series, you have vets ready to win now, and you have a star player in his prime that is ready to win now. You also have a head coach in Tom Thibodeau that wants to win now, and is probably coaching his last season in Minnesota in my opinion. Everybody is at different points in their career and they've been thrown together. Jimmy and Thibs are confrontational while Cat and Wiggins are more laid back, pretty content with how they are at the moment as NBA players, and aren't almost 30 years old so they have time to rewrite their narrative. 
Jimmy went from homeless and overlooked in the NBA draft to a bench player turned NBA all-star. So when Jimmy sees two ridiculously talented guys like Cat and Wiggins not on the same page as him, he's going to react in a way they might not be ready for. This quote right here from Jimmy to the media before Game 4 versus the Rockets in the first round of the playoffs sums up what I am getting at. He says, I put so much into this game and I only play to win. I don't play for any individual stats or accolades and at times I get lost in how everybody is not built the way that I'm built. These quotes that Jimmy kept putting out into the world didn't name anybody but it's clear who he is directing that to and that is Cat and Wiggins. Not saying this is the right way to go about things publicly or I agree with it totally but this is just what Jimmy believes is the right way to go about things. So why did Jimmy show up to Wolves practice on October 10th for only an hour, go and beat the starters with the scrubs and talk a lot of trash to Carl Towns, Wiggins and the team's GM about how they can't win without him? Well Jimmy has been trying to get traded since the end of the season and he let Tom Thibodeau know in May, June, July and August that he wanted to get traded so I'm assuming he's letting him know he wants out ASAP. The first we heard of the Jimmy trade request news was in September but privately Jimmy was letting the team know he wanted out earlier. The real problem here is that I haven't discussed in length is that Tibbs is not only the coach but he's also the president of basketball operations so he's playing for his job here. He wants to go into this season with Jimmy but he also can't go into next summer losing Jimmy for nothing so he's in a weird spot. Like I said the Wolves are just a big mess of conflicting parties that are not on the same path together. There were reports that Cat wasn't going to sign an extension unless the Jimmy situation was handled and if that is true then you know Cat isn't happy if Jimmy is going to be on the same team on opening night. It would be funny if Jimmy stays with the team the whole season and all this drama causes Cat and Wiggins to up their game and the Wolves get like the third seed or something. I really thought this trade would work out well in the long term last summer but as I mentioned the main people involved are all at different points in their careers and their personalities don't really mesh. Plus we're also talking about the Wolves here who are putting in work for the award of most dysfunctional NBA franchise. We literally have no idea what is happening with all of these leaks. There was apparently a players only meeting where Jimmy said he wants to compete with the Wolves but then a bunch of players on the team tweeted out that it's fake news and the meeting never happened. What do you guys think of this situation? Is Jimmy right about everything? Is he too toxic of a teammate or is it somewhere in the middle? My next video might be on my optimism for Carmelo Anthony in Houston, so I'll see you guys then.